Republicans going to be focusing on this year? Well, you know, to the to the to the leader's point, uh, jobs and our workforce development is a key issue, not only with uh, with the new legislation they're contemplating, but training, feeding the pipeline. You know, we're going to be concentrating a lot on that. Electric boat, all their great. Uh, support vendors, and now the new emerging industry of offshore wind is going to require some specialized folks. So we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, Republicans have been the canary in the coal mine on quasi-agencies and the problems that they've had for the last three or four years. Our, our bills have gone nowhere. Uh, we're going to push this year to try to make sure we have some controls implemented uh, on that, given the indiscretions of the Port Authority and the lottery and some of the others. So. Health care, specifically women's health care, I think is an issue we're going to concentrate on. We made some grounds last session. Uh, energy, we have to focus on the next generation of energy generation. That is going to be involved with battery storage and battery backup, and can we make that affordable and practical as we shift into the area of renewables and away from our base load. Transportation, we got to fix it. The question is how do we pay for it? And then finally, of course, we want to make sure that cities and towns our partners uh, have a little elevated status up here because you guys are the ones on the front line uh, who really keep taxes low, manage things very, very well. There's a lot we can learn from you, but we want to make sure that you're protected uh, and partners up here. So uh, it's an aggressive agenda for the next three months, but we're going to be up here fighting and, you know, we have a good partner in the House. So. Uh, so I look forward to this session. That's great. And that partnership between the state and the valleys, that's music to our ears. So thank you for, for that plug. <laughs> yeah. So um, just one last question before we go. I know we're taking up a lot of your time. Uh, it's a okay. busy day. Um, just at, for the budget, where do you see it going? And do you think that towns and cities will be helped uh, to add on to that last point? Well, as we said, the governor will do his budget budget adjustment address at noon today. He, yeah. They briefed us yesterday, and one at one point uh, they said they would maintain municipal aid funding. So that's what we know for now. But as you know, we've been fighting very hard for many years uh, for that municipal aid, when, yeah. particularly when the former governor was trying to put the teacher's pension on towns and cities. That was you know, one of our biggest issues that year, um, and we were successful, and that means the towns and cities were successful. Yes. Senator? Well, we know the property tax implications that cities and towns have generally are a direct result of uh, the commitments that state that the state's uh, budget fails to keep. And we want to make sure that we, we keep those partnerships and make sure that you're uh, uh, kept whole. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's the biggest thing that we can do, make sure that pilot and, uh, you know, the bond bill, where is that? The people are looking for town aid road. We've got to make sure that that comes out and, and move it forward. So uh, my understanding is the budget uh, is looking pretty good. Uh, it, it's going to be proposed in a little while for cities and towns. And, of course, we will, you know, we support supporting you guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being on the Municipal Voice today. I will let you get back to your important work. Uh, I'd like to thank our guest, uh, State Representative Claritas and State Senator Formiga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes. Pleasure.